Vaults have been a staple of the Fallout series since the very beginning. From Vault 13 to Vault 33, there have been over a hundred of them, each with iconic stories to tell. Some have been places of refuge for those trying to survive an apocalypse, and some have been abandoned to the silent march of time, sites for horrific events that ruined the lives of those within. However, nothing comes close to the horror that is Vault 22. If you aren't aware, Vault 22 is one of the many amazing locations in Fallout New Vegas. It is one of the few areas in the game to feature lush green foliage and flowers, but don't be deceived. While this area looks to be a welcoming oasis, it is filled with the stuff of nightmares. In the beginning, this vault was occupied by scientists. They only had one job, to use genetic modification to create crops that were pest, drought, and disease resistant with higher yields. One of their sponsors donated a species to experiment with called Bavaria morticana, a species of cordyceps-like fungus. When the spores are inhaled, the pest is infected and dies in roughly 10 to 20 days. Then it is reanimated by the fungus with the goal of spreading the spores further. This worked fairly well for insects, however, they didn't account for human infection. The fungus spread like wildfire through the vault, starting with Dr. Harrison Peters. Quote status report 9312. Not much to report today. The mood is unusually somber in the wake of Dr. Peters' passing. There's a strange rumor going around that the commotion downstairs was caused by, of all things, Dr. Peters' corpse suddenly animating and attacking people. I don't know who would start such a vicious rumor, but it is an exceptionally bad taste. One by one, the scientists fell victim. Now they live as reanimated corpses in the vault, waiting for others to enter so they can spread once again. They hide in the foliage like ambush predators about to catch their next meal. These spore carriers have no hope for a cure and are forever entombed within the vault. While this idea seems absolutely terrifying, it is important to remember that Bovaria morticana is a work of fiction. The fungus it is likely based on, cordyceps, only infects insects. It is impossible for it to infect humans due to our more complex immune system and higher body temperatures. Cordyceps is even used in traditional Chinese medicine, so it's something you don't have to worry about. Another real-world concept that is present in this vault is genetic modification of crops. This is actually what I want to discuss today. What is genetic modification? How do we do it? Could it possibly save our planet? And at what cost? I will admit I have a very strong bias about this subject, but I hope once I explain my points, you will begin to understand why. Genetically modified organisms, or GMOs, are very present in our day-to-day -day life. We have technically been doing it since the dawn of civilization through breeding. Selective breeding is the process where two organisms with desired traits are bred together to create offspring with that desired trait. Then as time goes on, most of those organisms have that desired trait, or even exaggerated versions of it. A good example of selective breeding is corn. Before humans, corn was a type of grass called teosinte. We know this through DNA analysis. Humans, over the course of 10,000 years, have bred corn to have larger kernels and in higher quantities. Another example in the animal world is purebred dogs. We have taken the domestic dog and bred different individuals for different traits we find desirable. There are some problems with selective breeding, though. First of all, we aren't entirely sure what traits will get passed down to the offspring and the organism can gain some undesirable traits. Second, this process takes many, many generations to reach a point we are happy with. The scientists of Alt-22 are trying something completely different, though. They are trying to insert genes into plants from other species to create better crops. Quote from Status Report 9228. Yields continue to improve. Splicing together cultivar GN188 with the existing corn samples has produced a hybrid that responds better to the artificial lights we have. While this sounds like science fiction, this is fairly accurate to modern agricultural research. Genome editing allows us to accurately add, remove, or alter the DNA in a plant. This is usually done through a tool called CRISPR. It stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats, which is a lot. It's a very complicated subject, but all you really need to know is that it allows us to edit genes. Now, the scientists of Vault 22 were trying to create crops that produced higher yields and were pest, drought, and disease resistant. This is actually what's going on right now. For example, we've been able to splice bacterial DNA into some crop plants. That makes them toxic to insects, yet safe for human consumption. This completely eliminates the need for pesticides and creates a cleaner and safer world. The possibilities really are endless with this technology. Think about it. We've created crops that no longer require pesticides. We can create crops that have a higher yield in a smaller space, giving us more food in the same field. 
We can grow food that doesn't require as much water in places that desperately need it. We can make food that's harder to kill by bacteria and viruses. We can add nutritional value to our food, make it taste better, make it look more appealing. This technology is important to our modern world. Unfortunately, this science has been rejected by many people. They sometimes hear the words genetically modified and panic. They have fears that the gene changes will cause cancer, allergic reactions are toxic and less nutritious. They also believe that the organisms will spread this new DNA to wild species. There are websites such as the Center for Food and Safety who make these claims, and they spread like wildfire. Luckily, we know from extensive research over more than three decades that none of these claims have any basis in reality. They're perfectly safe and, in fact, beneficial to our planet and our health. Using CRISPR, scientists are trying to actually take away the allergen properties found in crops like peanuts, creating safer food. They don't cause cancer due to the fact that the genes altered around the crop and don't transfer to human cells. They're non-toxic, at least not to humans. They're toxic to bugs, reducing our need for pesticides, which actually are toxic. We're able to add nutrients or increase them in our foods as well. And for spreading DNA? Well, our crops have been so genetically modified through breeding that they're completely different from their wild counterparts. Oh, and they don't create zombies either. GMOs are closely monitored by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the Environmental Protection Agency, and the U.S. Department of Agriculture. If they weren't safe for our consumption or our planet, then these agencies would step in immediately. They spend years researching and testing these organisms before they're released to farmers. Once they are, though, they're used quite extensively. If you want proof, in 2020, 92% of corn planted was genetically modified. The same goes for soybeans at 94% and cotton at 96 you can find bioengineered apples as well. These bioengineered plants could potentially save our planet. Bark beetle resistant conifers would be healthier, reducing our wildfires in the western United States. Four billion American chestnut trees were killed in the 20th century alone by a species of fungus, making them virtually extinct in the wild. With gene editing, we can make them resistant to the fungus, thus saving their ecosystems. And like I stated earlier, these organisms are tested extensively before being used, so we can see how they're affected. Many people argue that genetic engineering isn't natural and thus should not be released into natural ecosystems. This is an understandable fear, however consider this. Agrilus planipennis, the emerald ash borer, is a species of insect from Northeast Asia. As its name suggests, it infects a tree in the genus Fraxinus, commonly called ash trees. It does so by laying eggs beneath the bark. Once the larvae hatch, they eat the vascular tissues of the tree, thus killing it. In its native habitat, it has many predators, and ash trees have natural resistances. In 2002, the insect was discovered in Canton, Michigan. Since then, it has spread across this country at an alarming rate. The entire eastern United States ash tree population has been decimated. Millions of trees are dead now. Once introduced to an area, the emerald ash borer will kill 99% of the ash trees in 8 to 10 years. Now ask yourself, is this natural? Is the destruction of an entire native genus worth all of this? We have the technology to stop it by using those trees with resistances, and I believe that we should. It is up to us as a species to protect our planet, and the best way to do so is to change with it. Our very lives, and theirs, depend on it. Okay, so now I hope you have some understanding of what the scientists of Alt-22 were trying to accomplish. These are real-world sciences at work, and they're represented fairly well. They were able to sustain themselves by the food they were able to modify and grow in their environment. The scientists didn't only create beneficial crops though, they also created the deadly spore plant. This is a massive genetically modified Dionea muscipula, or Venus flytrap, though I'm sure most of you figured that out already. Why would the scientists of Alt-22 create something so harmful? It's hard to say, but there are times when genetic modification can go horribly wrong. The concept is called designer babies. I'm sorry, but things are gonna get pretty dark in this part of the video. You see, we've been using CRISPR to try and cure some diseases such as HIV. The idea of making us more resilient sounds like a dream come true, but it can lead down a slippery slope. The most common debate is about the concept of eugenics. This is the belief and practice of bettering the human population genetically. While this can sound promising in theory, in practice it is, and has been, a disaster. In 1940, Nazism was at its peak. Adolf Hitler used eugenic legislations in his regime. He believed that anyone he deemed as a degenerate or unfit should be sterilized. This led to the segregation, institutionalization, sterilization, and mass murder of 17 million people. North America wasn't safe from these ideals either. 
People of color, the mentally ill, the disabled, and the poor were all targets for the eugenics movement. This is a hard subject to think about, let alone discuss. These are questions we feel we shouldn't be asking, yet we have to. If CRISPR was used to, for example, create humans that are seen as more attractive or had better muscle mass, then how much of an advantage would they have in society? As someone who has a disability, it's a hard concept to visualize. Through the use of CRISPR, I could not exist as I am. I wouldn't be me. If you want to tie this back to Fallout, look no further than the super mutants. They're humans that have been exposed to the forced evolutionary virus, or FEV. They're made to be stronger with more endurance, immune to diseases and radiation, as well as have a higher intelligence. In the first Fallout game, the Master's whole plan centers around making super mutants the dominant race, as he believes they are genetically superior. Yet, in doing so, he would erase countless people he sees as lesser. This is the concept of designer babies at work. The idea that we can create the perfect human. This is a dangerous idea. It could lead to the erasure of certain peoples and could lead to more socioeconomic damage to the lower class. The CRISPR technology would most likely only be available to the wealthy, causing the poor to be seen as inferior to the genetically modified. Eugenics is something I fear and that is unfortunately still practiced to this day through xenophobic ideals. Now, let's get back to Vault 22. What went wrong? Well, it can all be traced back to B. Mordecana, right? But where did that come from? Well, it was originally developed at X-22 Botanical Garden at Big MT, a research center and industrial site. They created the fungus as a means of pest control for military purposes. The fungus was provided to the vault by pre-war defense contractors. The goal of the scientist was to advance human civilization through the means of producing more food with more health benefits. They were on the right track too. Unfortunately, they were given a sample of something deadly. Should they have known what they had, it could have been contained. They were told to research something they did and it cost them their lives. So how far can science really go? Or how far should it go? I believe the scientists were doing good work. They were trying to benefit humanity. They had aspirations to see humans fed and healthy, yet that isn't what happened. Science is, well, it's a science. It isn't always as precise as we want it or as clear as we want it. In the right circumstances, it can save the world, but handled poorly, it can destroy it. The ethics of genetic modification can be boiled down to this. What are we willing to do to save both ourselves and our planet? Vault 22 is a cautionary tale about when things go wrong. It teaches us that maybe some things shouldn't be tampered with. How far should we go in the name of science? This is the impossible question that we as humans have been asking ourselves for centuries. But allow me to shed some light on what I believe is the answer. Charles Darwin was the one who created the theory of evolution, which was seen as unethical at the time. Only time will tell how we view bioengineering in the future. Thank you for watching. I'm sorry this video is much darker than my others, but this is something I think about quite often. I really am hopeful that our future includes a better understanding of our natural world and how we can save it. If you enjoy what I do, please like and subscribe. Turn on notifications so you don't miss my next video. And comment as well. Give me some video game recommendations or topics you would like to see covered. See you next time.